Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerbin, and this is your tutorial for the week. I'm going to be covering Moho again this week. We'll be touching on reference layers, and I'm sure there's a lot of material out there by now on reference layers, including my own tutorial I did for Smith Micro a couple years ago, but I figured why not add a reference layer tutorial to the library? So that's what we're going to do. And just a reminder, next week, July 10th, that's a Monday, I'll be releasing my new course on Puppet Pin Walk Cycles and After Effects. I'll be uploading it right here to this channel. And I'm really excited to release this, and I hope it's one of many. I'm continuing to work on new courses as the channel evolves. And there'll be an ebook as well if you wish to purchase that. And I'll have all the details for that in the playlist and the individual videos for that course. But anyway, with that said, let's get started with learning reference layers inside of Moho Pro 12. So to begin, we have three files currently opened up inside of Moho. And to use reference layers, you don't have to use multiple files. But I felt that this was the best way to demonstrate. So let's begin. I have a blank scene file ready to go. And if we click on the first file up here, Antonio master file, you'll see I have a rig also ready to go. And then we have the third file, which is just a helmet that I'm going to include here in a little bit. So let's say what I want to do is bring the Antonio master file into the scene. But not only that, I want the ability to control the Antonio rig through the master file. So if I make a change to that master file, I can choose to update and reflect that change in the scene. So to do this, I first want to import my file with Command Shift Y or Control Shift Y if you're on Windows. And I'm inside the folder for my files. I want to locate Antonio master file. Here it is. I'm going to click and choose to open it up. Now here we are. We have the ability to import like we always have. So I'm going to click on the Antonio rig. But there's one additional option we need to check. And that is import by reference, which is on the bottom right of the panel. Let's click on this as it will give us the ability to reference. And once we're good, we can click OK. We now have the file inside of our scene, just like he was inside the master file. We have our layers and you can see with all the Antonio layers, we have a green arrow next to all of them. This is indicating that not only is this a reference, but the reference file is currently updated. So let's play around with this. I'm going to jump back now to the master file. And let's say for whatever reason I'm working on this and I realize that I no longer want to have a red hat for my character. So what I want to do is go into the hat group layer and locate hat 2. We'll just change the top portion of this for right now. I'll click on my select shape tool or Q on the keyboard. Click once on the top of the hat. Come over to your style panel and I want to find the gradient effect and then click on its options. And here I'm just going to quickly change the colors. So I'll come in and we'll just change it to a pinkish purple. Again, I'm not sure why I would do this, but let's just do it for the sake of a visual demonstration and I can click OK. So now we definitely have a different color for the hat. And if I were to use Command S or Control S, if you're on Windows, to save the file, we can jump back to the scene file. Now, the arrows next to the layers are red. This is indicating a change has been made to the reference. So what I want to do here is scroll up, find the Antonio bone layer, right click, and then I want to pick Update Layer Reference. Once we do this, you can see we have some new options. Now, depending on what you're doing, you might want to check or uncheck some of these. As an example, let's say we were adding a new layer to the master file, but we don't want to bring that new layer into the scene. We could uncheck this option and then just choose to replace the mismatch vectors, which would in this case then update the color of the hat. You can also choose if you want to remove layers that don't exist in the original. So if you've been adding layers to this file 
but later on you update this reference and if you click that option it will remove all those additional layers from the scene file that are not on the master file and the same goes for bones so if you are changing bones with this file and you later choose to replace mismatched bones from the master file then that will also take effect but in this case i'm just going to click on replace mismatched vectors and i can click ok and you can see now the change has been updated and my arrows are now green. I'll do just one more example of this. Come over here to the helmet and I'm just going to click on the helmet group layer, go up to my edit menu, and then we're going to choose copy layer. With the layer copied, I'll come back to the Antonio master file and we're just going to paste the layer. edit paste layer the helmet is above the head and that is good flip horizontally and we'll just reposition this really quick again just quickly for the sake of a visual demonstration I'm then going to use command S or control S to save and it's important that you do save your master file otherwise you won't be able to update the reference come back here to the scene we're now going to right click on Antonio. We will update layer reference, and then we can choose in this case to add new missing layers from the original source. And if you have all these other ones checked, that's fine. If there are no changes, nothing's going to be changed anyway. So if you're ever in doubt and you just wanna make sure it's all the same, you can check all these options, but really we only need that first option. And then when we click okay, you can see we now have that new layer neatly placed inside of the Antonio bone layer. And that's just a little bit about layer referencing. There are much more complicated things you can do. But for now, I hope that gives you a jump start in organizing your files, creating a master library, and then being able to animate out without the worry of changing your files. Everything will always be the same with that master file. So thanks for watching. Again, July 10th is my new course and ebook so be sure to check that out. For my subscribers, there will be 19 videos in this course, so don't freak out when 19 videos hit your feed. It's all a part of the same course. And I'll also release a standalone tutorial on Friday next week as well. So you'll be getting me twice, and, well, I apologize for that. But tough. You're going to have to deal with it. All right. See you next time.